Yeah, so this is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about Bitcoin. And I would love, love, love to get more women in the space because it's very dominated by men. And for some reason, the technology, it's just, it attracts a lot of men who were into gaming or engineering, but it's honestly just, the technology is about saving. And all women, I think, want to save and want to take care of both themselves and the loved ones that they have around them, whether that's their partners or their kids or their families, their parents. I'm someone who I desperately want to be able to retire my parents because they worked so, so, so hard coming here as immigrants. And life is just getting more expensive every year, right? Like That's one thing that I think we can all agree on, that everything's get, getting more expensive, but our income, our wages, the salaries that we get at the jobs we work so hard at, they're not keeping up with the pace of how expensive education and housing is getting. I think about my peers, my millennial peers, my girlfriends who are all boss girls and they have great positions and jobs. They're working their way up. They feel like it's daunting to think about purchasing a house because everything's gotten so expensive. And so I say that because that is literally the fundamental thing that is wrong with our system and that Bitcoin's trying to address. So basically, we don't get taught in school what money printing is. We just kind of accept the fact that, you know, we all transact in the US dollar, whether it's in a credit card form or cash or, you know, debit cards. But the U.S. dollar used to have a gold backing. It used to be backed by something that's scarce. You can't just make all the gold that you want. It's laborious to create gold, and there's only a finite amount that's in the the earth. And so we used to have a gold backing. And then in 1971, I didn't realize this, it's in the Bitcoin standard, but President Nixon took us off the gold standard. And all of a sudden, we had money that was essentially backed by nothing but the faith of the U.S. government. And ever since then, we've printed a lot of money. And what that means is it's not just like printing, you know, the pieces of paper that go out, but it's actually depositing money into the accounts of big banks. And it's allowing for big corporations and people that are rich and powerful in this country to be able to borrow money very easily. And what that does is it creates something called the Cantillon effect, which essentially means that the people who are at the top, the people who are the richest, the most powerful, the politically connected, and the ones closest to the money printer, they benefit from that access to capital and money the most. And so what happens is they get this pool of money, they purchase assets, they buy back stocks, you know, they purchase a bunch of real estate, and they get richer and richer and richer, and everybody else in the middle class and the savers and the low income Um, they suffer and everything just gets more expensive around them because as the supply of money grows and is inflated, every dollar is worth less, right? That's literally the definition of inflation. Inflation, And so we hear inflation a lot right now in the news, but it's really not new. We've had inflation It's one of the reasons why our stock market has gone up and up and up, even though these companies are not necessarily valued or worth or producing the earnings that are needed to validate these really high stock prices. But the money's pouring into stocks because you can't save in cash. The money's losing its value. So people who are rich put their money into equities, which are stocks, or they put their money into real estate. And so again, we're having this really big wealth concentration that I think is really hurting the fabric of our society. It's making the average person feel like no matter how hard they work, they can't get by, right? You Mm -hmm. can't afford a new house because it's 20% higher than the year before. You, you know, maybe don't invest in stocks. You have to go to the grocery store or the gas station and you're paying so much more. And I think it puts this really big pressure on, on, the working class and society and makes people feel like the system's rigged. It's unfair. They can never get ahead. And if we created a system of money that was ex- extremely controlled by regu- like rules and, and engineering and computer science as opposed to, say, powerful people that can print as much as they want, and there was a finite supply, a finite amount that couldn't be printed more, we would actually create a more fair system because no one would have disproportionate access or an advantage in that system. The rich wouldn't just get extra printed Bitcoin because that that concept wouldn't exist. And I think it would allow us to sort of balance... Um, this this debt-driven financial institution and, and situation that we're in. And that's my hope with Bitcoin is it would provide us with the ability to sort of rebuild our economy based on 
hard money that can't be debased or devalued or printed. And it would be based on the value that people put into the economy, right? So like, hopefully you could work as a hairdresser or auto mechanic or accountant or doctor or whatever, and you could put your money in the bank and you would see it go up in value and things get cheaper around you as opposed to the opposite, where you put your money right. in the bank, it goes down in value and everything gets more expensive. So I know that's a very long-winded answer, but it's literally the reason I'm passionate about Bitcoin because it's this beautiful technology network work that's enabling enabling people to transact from one part of the globe to another with no third party, no government, no corporation, no one in between, just that person transacting via technology to another and the money is fixed in terms of supply and it's programmed to be scarce so that it goes up in value as opposed to down. Right. I know it, it's a complex answer because it's a complex issue, but I, I, I'm determined to teach all of our listeners about how money works and why hard money like Bitcoin is better than the soft money we have right now, which is all of our currencies. Um, can you explain deeper why this current system benefits like the wealthy, right? The people who are able to buy assets versus like the regular person and how, mm -hmm. yeah, may, maybe just a little bit more. So that we understand. Yeah, so completely. So the Cantillon effect in money printing, it is so, so, so complicated. And I feel like it was almost designed that way, right? Yeah. So it was designed to like reward the people who had who were closer to the government mm -hmm. or the money printer. Yeah. So two things I want to point to for that. So when the government decides to print money, it's essentially depositing money into the accounts of banks so that they can then loan out that money and stimulate the economy and put that money into the system. So the money didn't exist. There's no like account that the federal government took it from, say, let's say like we paid taxes, it comes out from that account. No, they literally deposit money that never existed into banks. And those banks either purchase treasury bonds or they actually make loans out to the public. Well, who are they going to make loans out to the fastest, the easiest, and, and the ones that they consider the most risk-free? Well, they're going to be the people that have the most money, have the most assets and collateral to back up that those loans and the people who are the, essentially the big corporations. And so you have a system essentially where now these big corporations, these big companies, these wealthy people are seen as the risk-free uh, loan takers. And so they get this money and then they can allocate it wherever they want. They could purchase back stock. They can buy, they can buy into equities. They can go buy up a bunch of real estate and then charge whatever they want in rent. So literally the money kind of pools at the top and the hope is it trickles down, but that process has not been working. It concentrates a lot of wealth with these big corporations and entities who are already really rich. They basically get to do whatever they want. You know, we have venture capital. It's like you can raise however much money today that you want, right? On just an idea because the money is so easy at this level and people are hoping for a big, you know, uh, selling price of their company and like they want to retire on the beach. But like this is actually hurting the little guy. This is hurting the little person because a lot of those loans are not made to the fabric of a great economy, which is small business owners, right? That are pro providing the goods and services that the communities really benefit from and thrive from. You know, I would say that a local community benefits more from a locally owned restaurant or business as opposed to a McDonald's or a Starbucks coming in, right? I think we can all kind of agree on that. <laughs> 